Hey guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University, and we're going to do the third and final video of the basics, the introduction of feet rolls and the universal chart, the universal table. Okay, so let's get right into this. We've already learned uh, the, the very basics about uh, how to, how to cross-reference your column, your, your rank, your power rank from uh, whatever you're going to roll on the opposite side of the chart and cross-reference them together to find your results, which will, which will in turn tell you a color. You're going to take that color, you're going to go to the very top of the chart, and that's going to tell you, you know, based on what exactly you're trying to do. Are you trying to punch someone? Okay, blunt, physical. Are you trying to throw a knife? Okay, edge, thrown. You know, or are you trying to wrestle with someone? Go over here to grappling. All sorts of different things that you can do. So, uh, what it, that that's only when it's very basic. That's literally me here, bad guy there, me roll to throw sharp pointy stick at him. Okay, cool, easy. But what about if you're actually doing a contest of strength against someone or, or any kind of a contest against someone? That's when it's going to get a little bit trickier. All right. So, if they've got a known intensity. That is what it is, okay? That just, it is what it is, man. So let's say we're going to try and have a, a contest of strength against, let's say, a static item like a wall, okay? Spider-Man, you're really strong, right? And there's this vibranium wall in front of you. Now, we're going to get into the, the very specifics of trying to break and rend things and things like that. But just for the very basics, the extreme basics, not going to thickness, yes, thickness. Did I really just say it again? Thickness, third time's a charm. Uh, sometimes that's the same case with rolls also. Without going into how thick the item is, you have got to try and break this, this, uh, the, let's say it's a, a, a small box. You've got to rip the box open, but it's made out of vibranium. That is an incredible strength material. Okay. And, and you have incredible strength. Okay. So with that being the case, in order to succeed in doing what you want to do, there is nothing, there is nothing on the top of this chart about breaking open a small container. They just don't have breaking open small container on, on something like this. So you're simply going to do a contest of strength against a static item. Now, if this thing is made out of vibranium, hey, vibranium, you hit it, it doesn't hurt. But you want to try and do damage to vibranium, use your strength against it, not in shock, but in actual wrestling and rending, okay? That is how you're going to manipulate vibranium, especially if you're Spider-Man. So with vibranium being an incredible and Spider-Man having incredible strength, that's a perfect pairing. So a white is always going to be a miss or a mess up or a fumble or a da -da, whatever. But uh, the other the other colors of this particular tricks table, all right, the red, the yellow, and the the green, these are going to represent something different. So if you are Spider Man trying to rend open a box made out of uh, incredible strength material like vibranium, you will have to get an average roll for that. The color will be yellow. So uh, green would be a flat out miss, just like a white would. It would, be, it would be some kind of mess up. Your hand slips or you're just not strong enough right now, whatever. Maybe you can try again next round by like pr uh, planting your feet better. Maybe you can try it again because, oh, I'm going to grit my teeth and do it this time. Whatever. I'm, maybe in the next round, I'm going to actually use my teeth. Whatever. Whatever your excuse is for being able to roll again. Very easy game that you can keep on trying unless the judge says that some extraneous uh, circumstances cause it that you can't do that again. This game relies heavily on the narration of the judge. Most games do. This game, I feel, especially. So, uh, let's say, however, that you're just trying to open up, uh, I don't know, a, uh, let's say a, a box made out of oak wood. Okay, now you're talking about, like, excellent 20 material strength. Now, Spider-Man can open something like that a lot easier. Only excellent 20, he's got incredible strength. So excellent versus uh, his incredible versus an excellent, that is lower than his column, than his power rank. Therefore, he only needs a green to succeed. So a white will, again, always miss. It will always be a fumble. You did not succeed. It's always a failure. But a green this time and above, so green or yellow or red, will get you the desired result. But what if the item is stronger than your uh, your incredible strength? 
Well, let's say you're going to try and pull open something that is made out of osmium or even vibra uh, even uh, adamantium. Okay, now you're dealing with something entirely different from either amazing to unearthly. Trying to open something like that, that's going to be an entirely different story. Now you have to actually get in the red, and only a red will do. Here, a white misses, a yellow misses, and a green misses. All three of those colors that you can only succeed by uh, scoring in the red. So you probably want to spend some karma. We'll get into spending karma a little bit later. For now, that's the idea of how an intensity feat works. And that's with anything that you're going to try and do where there's actually something else that uh, is actually going to stand in your way. So trying to overcome some kind of a static odd, that is going to uh, cause you some kind of trouble. So like, let's say lifting something. This is not just breaking something. It's also lifting something. A, a tower falls on top of you. Maybe it's seeing through darkness. Okay, if you are trying to see through darkness, on average, your, your average eyesight is going to be, let's say, typical. Your average eyesight is going to be typical. So that being the case, you're going to be trying to peer through uh, some kind of darkness and, and, and darkness is going to be of a typical intensity. Now, maybe you, you're like Wolverine and you've got incredible, or excuse me, monstrous, um, uh, what is it, uh, intuition. And more specifically, he's got incredible eyesight and incredible uh, hearing. His, his, his olfactory is at Monster 75, but his eyesight is considered to be at incredible. Hawkeye, his eyesight is considered to be remarkable. All right. Everybody's got different abilities. And, and then, of course, Daredevil completely bypasses that with his radar sense stick as well. But for the most part, um, an, an average human being of typical intuition and all that good stuff, here's a typical darkness. He's going to have to roll in a yellow feet to be able to make out an object and see just a couple of feet in front of him. But what about if it's a magical darkness? Ah, yes, this is something entirely different. This is an unnatural darkness. The, the feet is set at excellent. The feet is set at excellent. The intensity, I should say, is set at excellent. So with excellent, if you've got your typical ability and you're trying to peer through that darkness, that's not going to work so well. You've actually got to get into the red to peer through that darkness. Now, if you are, let's say, Professor X and you've got amazing intuition, that's not going to be so hard to do. You don't need a, uh, since that's only excellent and you've got amazing, all you really got to do, as long as there's nothing else, you know, causing you problems, you just got to get a green to see through that darkness. But if you're a regular human, you got to get a red <laughs> and there's nothing above red. Uh, house rules uh, ignored for, for the moment. Now, let's say, however, you're going to change your odds and you're going to use infrared lenses. OK, you put in, so, you know, some some night vision goggles or something which give you excellent ability to peer through the darkness. Now, regular darkness, a typical, you just need to get a green to see through that darkness. But let's say it's a magical darkness. You need to get an excellent uh, or you're rolling against excellent. You have excellent. So you're actually going to have to get into yellow. So uh, all these different circumstances allow these these feet rolls to change. The, it's, it's all about intensity. So I'm going to give you uh, another example right here. Okay, let's take something like teleportation, okay? There's not going to be a static feat to roll up against, but let's say you take somebody like uh, Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler has the ability to teleport. He can teleport one time up to his distance. So let's say you've got a teleporter, and the teleport, the teleport ability that you have is excellent 20. So you can teleport up to six areas away at a time. But what if you want to do, let's say, three quick uh, successive teleports in a row? Okay. First, the judge has the ability to... Um, to cause intensity to what you're trying to do, even though there's nothing to necessarily roll against. So you're, you're simply rolling against yourself, basically. So he could say, okay, you want to roll to, or you, you want to try and do uh, three quick teleports. Okay, not a problem, not a problem. Let's say just two teleports instead of just the one. You want to do the one teleport, you do the one teleport, you can go up to six areas away. But you want to do two successive teleports. Okay, not a problem. You're going to have to roll under a yellow intensity feat based on your power rank ability. So you've got excellent 20 ability. Okay, roll up against um, uh, excellent. And if you get in the yellow, then you can you can do two quick te uh, teleports. Let's say you want to do three teleports. Okay, exact same thing, but you got to roll in the red. And as the judge myself, I would say, but 
whether you're doing two extra, you know, two teleports or three teleports in one round quick successive, your total distance cannot exceed that six area uh, limit. So I can say you can go two areas in the first teleport, two areas in the second teleport, and two areas in the third teleport. Cumulative, there's your six areas, sure, or anything lesser than that. Not a problem. I don't have any kind of an issue with that. But actually going uh, 18 areas, no. That's a little bit more than your power allows. Now you're talking about you're really, you know, potentially ripping your body apart, leaving parts of yourself back there. So there's always different ways that you can handle if a character wants to do something that you don't think the character should be able to do, but you still want to give the character the ability to at least try. Because, you know, it could wind up knocking you out. Hey, if you fail this roll, not only can you not do it, maybe you've also got a roll against stun. You know, there's there's always that opportunity. Uh, like if you get in the white, yeah, that's... That's not just a regular fail. That's a critical fail. If you if you have to roll two successive teleports, you need to get in the yellow and you get a green. Now you just failed to do it. But if you get in the white, that's a that's a genuine fail right there where you're going to have to roll against stun. You actually wind up stunning yourself. So that works. And mind you, there are always extra situations out there that a, that a tricky player... Oh, and I love those tricky players. And I don't mean that in any kind of a disparaging way at all. I genuinely, in my heart, I, I heart tricky players because they're the ones who keep the games interesting. So let's say you're going to get the tricky character who's going to say, okay, you know, I'm going to try and uh, bring down this, this wall of ice by punching it. And somebody else says, yeah, but I've got fire generation ability. So what can I do? Well, this is where you got to start thinking. And we're going to get into fire and, and all that other stuff. You know what I'm saying? There's always going to be some. But but as a basic, if, if you're about to play this game tomorrow and I haven't put up the video yet for fire and ice and all that good stuff yet, not a worry. Always look at it as, uh, in general, it's a typical ability that you're rolling against. Okay? Unless you know otherwise. If you know this is, a, this is pyro doing this fire and it's an incredible 40 wall, a huge wall wall that goes, you know, down the street, incredible 40 intensity. There you go. Now you want to try and ice this up or, or water this down or something like that. That's one thing. But, uh, you can, if, if there's just, you know, oh, the, the door is on fire or whatever. Okay. Just say in general, it's a typical intensity. So, uh, you know, if you've got a good ability, you just simply have to get one, uh, you simply have to get in the green. Just don't white it. Don't get in the white. But if you get in the green, you're good. Yellow, good. Red, good. You're good. If your ability is typical, you got to get in the yellow because it's also typical. If your ability is four, you need to roll that red. Probably going to be spending some karma, bud. Uh, on top of that, there's also, here's this thing. Very quickly, there's the opportunity, the optional rule. The optional rule. This is not a part of the rule. No rules lawyer is going to turn around and say, oh, but here's the deal. No. <laughs> You've got the optional uh, ability to call into play the automatic and or impossible feat. So check this out. Let's say um, you're going to be trying to lift this. Uh, you know what? Instead, let's say you're going to be trying to swim, okay? You've got the uh, incredible 40 swimming ability and you're trying to swim against uh, a standard current. Cool, man. You do all of the different things. So a standard current would, let's say, be typical six, right? Just in general, it's a typical six. But let's say there's actually a tsunami here. And you've determined that the power of this tsunami is monster 75. Because here's this guy with water generation ability, water control, and he's got 75 ability. You've only got incredible 40. Look, if he had amazing 50 water uh, control power, I would say that they have this guy roll on his incredible, but he's got to get a red or higher, right? If he's uh, yellow uh, intensity to his uh, to his intensity, if, he, if both you know characters have incredible abilities, incredible swimming, incredible water uh, manipulation, water control, then he's got to roll in the yellow to swim through this current. And if it's a remarkable he's got and you've got incredible, then no worries. You can just simply roll under and get a green or better. No worries. But what if he's got a monstrous? Now, that is more than one column shift above what you're capable of doing. Now, that being the case, you can just simply say, no, you absolutely can't do it. He is that powerful. And usually do that for, for storyline purposes or just because you don't think that he should be able to. And, and hey, I support it. I fully support it. The, the book supports it. It's an optional rule. But as the judge, that means you have the option to use it or not use it. The player has the option to say, but it's an optional rule. You say, not today it's not. It's mandatory. This is law. So, <laughs> judge, 
lot of power in your hands, all right? Don't abuse it. Your players will conspire against you. They will. They will wind up forming their own game, and you won't be invited. <laughs> so um, that's the impossible feat. There's no way you're going to make that. Just give it up. Give it up. Tell the character this is an impossible feat. Don't just don't waste your karma. Keep your karma. There's no way you can make it. But let's say also that the character is so powerful, okay, that you know, like the Sentry wants to lift up Aunt May. Come on. Like, do you really have to roll <laughs> against the, the, the sentry picking up Aunt May? You know, that's just anything that is three column shifts lower than your ability, you should not have to worry about at all. If you've got incredible strength and you look at that chart and you go down three points, if you got, you know, you uh, an incredible, uh, excuse me, a good intensity uh, wind against your flight powers, you know, okay, fine. You got to roll in the uh, uh, the green, or you can simply say, you know what, whatever, man. It's three ranks lower. You got this. Don't worry about that. At the same time, at the same time, you can choose when to use it, when not to use it. So, case in point, let's say uh, Wolverine is swimming underwater, all right, and he's trying to get through uh, a door, but he's got to make a, a feet roll to get through it. Now, it's just a, a, a poor four lock, and he's got his good strength. Excellent if you're going to look in, in, in certain books. But for the most part, he's got his good strength. He should be able to bust that door open without any kind of a worry whatsoever. No need to even roll. That should be an automatic feat. But very time sensitive now, right? Because there's the chance that he could start drowning soon if he doesn't get to what he's doing. Or let's say even the uh, same character, Wolverine, he's trying to track somebody through the forest. Now he's got, you know, amazing abilities at sneaking through the forest and, and all that good stuff. And he's got his monstrous olfactory, his monstrous uh, tracking ability. Okay, this shouldn't be a problem, him following a regular person who's not running through water or anything like that. But, but if he knows that there's a monster chasing him and another hunter going after the bad guy, something like that, he knows time is really limited. That's when suddenly a character could make, could feasibly make a mistake. Even a resolute uh, uh, professional could very well make a mistake when the pressure is on, right? So you can easily say, nope, I'm afraid you're going to have to roll anyway. It's not an automatic feat for you. Uh, so even though it's just a standard, let's just say typical uh, ability, you still have to roll using your monstrous. You just have to get a green or above. Because there is that slight chance, ever so slim, that Wolverine could fail, and then it's going to take an extra round to do what you're trying to do. So this this actually gives the feeling of a time crunch. You've only got a limited amount of time to get this thing done before those hunters get there, or the bad guy, you know, creeps up on you, uh, Sabretooth with a Muramasa blade, you know? So... You really have to know what you're going to do in the game, how you're going to implement the rules, optional or otherwise. And optional rules can be used or not used, all within the, the context of the exact same game. That's what the judge is for. All right, guys, that's pretty much going to wrap it up for feats. We got the intensity down, and from this point forward, we're going to start moving into more intricacies of the game. I can assure you, the hardest part of the game we just got through in these past three videos. So everything else from this point on should be a cakewalk. All fun. All fun in games. Keep gaming. Professor Bill, Comic Book University. Class dismissed. <laughs>